All right, so as we continue our brief study of Linux 101, and we're just covering some of the basics of utilizing Linux and how we can uh, use that while we're building Android, there's a couple more things that we need to cover. Now first, I'd like you to note that I'm using a different computer with a different graphical user interface. We talked about this in the first video of this series where that desktop was utilizing the graphical user interface of Unity on Ubuntu 18.04. This is also Ubuntu 18.04, but this is utilizing XFCE as the desktop environment. And uh, so there's lots of different graphical user interfaces and the ways that things look can change a lot, and it's really a matter of personal preference. That's not what I want to focus on today, but I just wanted to point that out while we continue to uh, look at this. So right here, I have a terminal open, and I have two tabs open in my terminal. Uh, the first tab is open in the Downloads folder right here, Home Alaska Linux User Downloads, and we can see that by saying Print Working Directory, Home Alaska Linux User Downloads, and the other one is in our Documents, Projects, Phones, HTC, Lexicon, Device, HTC, Lexicon. Really old phone, but here's the folder there. And I just brought these up so that way it was easy for you to understand what I'm looking at. So what I'd really like to talk about today is running shell scripts. So when you are compiling Android, one of the things that happens is shell scripts are often run either directly or indirectly by you to build things and do things and run commands in the shell of in, of the uh, computer. So for instance, right here, we have all of these green and blue files here. And you notice some of them end with the word .sh. That means it's a shell file. And because it has an X for our permissions, remember in our last video we looked at permissions, that means this file is executable. It can be run as a command. Now notice these are also green and they can be run as, as a command as well because they are executable. And these are make files. And we'll talk about those more in just a minute. But when it comes time to do things in Android, one of the things you might have to do, for instance, is set up make files and extract files from the phone. And these shell scripts allow you to do that. If I want to read a file, I can say cat. And if I cat a file, or catalog it to the terminal here, and we'll just say extract dash files dot shell. Now you notice I didn't type that all in, I just typed E and X and hit tab and it auto-completed or filled in the rest for me. That's just a little tip for you in case you need that later. But if I cat this file, it's going to display all of that file here in the terminal and I can scroll up and read what it says and we get back to where we were right up here. <clears throat> so this is what's in that extract uh, files dot shell file. So if I open this up also here with like a text editor then you can see it's the same thing just right there and you can see all of the slashes and everything that were written into the terminal here. Notice that it line wraps the terminal for you, which is very convenient. So um, to better understand shell files, I wanted to look at one that was rather simple. So I have this cal.shell, and it just runs the calendar with a little bit of an option for you to choose what, uh, what calendar you want. And so I have that open in this other tab here. And we can see that again. We can cat that cal.shell, and we see the options that are there. So if I'm going to run a command, right, uh, there's what's called a path. And a path looks in certain places for a command. So if I just type cal.shell, and I'm hitting tab, and you hear that boom, boom, boom sound, that, if I press enter, Notice that it says cal.shell, command is not found, but I'm in the folder with it, right? And that's because what's happening is it's looking in the path for the set places that programs should be to find cal.shell, and it doesn't find it. If I want to run something that's in the directory I'm in, we use the 
um, dot right here to say source as in like right here and then this forward slash to say this place this directory and now we say cal dot shell so if I do that look at this it says uh, here it just shows me January it's January 29th would you like a different month choose a number or choose no and so I'll say let's say uh, four all right there we go April and it gives me a few seconds to read it and then it's going to end the program. Uh, this was just a very simple program that I wrote just for um, you know displaying the calendar uh, and then I thought it would be easy to use here uh, as well. So path. Path and how we run a shell script. So for instance we've learned that if we say something in this directory with the dot forward slash and why is that? If we say ls dash l a h right we talked about ls in one of our previous videos we see we have this dot and these dots. So this dot is the directory it has a d it's a directory we talked about this in the last couple of videos but this dot means this current directly directory these two dots means the directory before this one so if I make a new folder we'll just call it folder right and I change directory to get into that folder and I say ls dot lah we see we, there's nothing in this folder we can look in it there's nothing there but if I want to run that cal.shell, which is in the previous folder, and I know that I can say dot dot, well, not there, dot dot forward slash, and now I can say that cal, and there it is. It shows up, and we'll say no. So I just want to talk about running uh, something like a shell file. And so shell files are, once again, just a file that's going to run something in bin bash. So bash is the shell environment we're using right now. This is bash or the shell. Okay. And uh, so when you run a shell file, it says I want you to run bin bash and do these things. And so you know the commands are cal, read, echo, sleep, exit right and so it's going to do all of those things but that leads us to path if we echo dollar path all caps right here this is the environment variable of path this is all the places that Linux is going to look for the command that you chose to run so for instance if I want to run ls right to or CD to go back right and now LS and we see this cal in this folder where does it run that LS from well we can say which LS right and it is in bin LS that's where it is and it knows to look there because of the path all it does is check the path and say hey where should I look for this command LS and so when you type LS it looks and says is it in user local S bin nope all right, look at the next one. Is it in user local bin? Nope. Okay, look at the next one. User s bin? Nope. Look at the next one. User bin? Nope. Look at the next one. S bin? Nope. Bin? Oh yeah, there's an ls in bin. Let's run that. And then it stops looking. So these are sequential, and it's going to start at the beginning and look in this place first, and then that place, and this place, and that place, and this place, and that place. And so it does matter the order that they're in. You can change this order by changing the path variable. But uh, I just wanted to talk about path and how we get to these places. And what's funny is I, I did which. I mean, we can which, which, which is in user bin, which, right? So uh, that's kind of funny that it has to look in the path variable for the word which, so it can run which on itself. Um, at least I find that comical. Maybe you don't. Um, I guess that's just nerd humor right there. But so when we're running shell scripts, when we're doing things in Android compiling, 
uh, this is how this works with these paths and, and running these these files. But also what happens when you set up your compile environment by typing that build environment setup dot shell, right? There isn't one here. It's going to say not found. It doesn't exist because I just typed that out of the blue and there isn't one in here. But when you type that command, which is the first command it asks you to type when you're going to compile Android, it's looking, it's saying source in the build folder, which is right where we are now, look in the environment setup shell and run that shell and it's going to go through and set up the environment so this shell right now is its own environment it is set up with all these environment variables like the variable echo path and so it will go through and set up all of these unique variables that are specific for building Android. One of the big things it's going to do is make whatever folder you ran that in be the new root directory or the beginning directory for your Android build. And so that way it's not going all the way back to the real root, which is way back here. This is real root, just the forward slash, that has all the files in it. It doesn't go back to that, it actually just goes to the beginning of your Android repository tree. And so it's really interesting to note in how these shells work and how they set up the environment and they change things like the path, like the environment variables that you need just to build Android. Um, for instance, if we run this extract files dot shell, it's going to make an envir environment variable of device is lexicon and manufactures HTC. And this is important because now it's going to make a directory and it's going to make this directory and it's going to go back a folder, back a folder, back a folder and make a directory called vendor. And then it's going to name that next folder in their manufacturer which is this variable that it made of HTC and then device which is this variable it made of lexicon and then it's going to make another folder in there called proprietary and it's going to start pulling files and putting them in there and it's pulling them off of your phone and putting them in there and so that's essentially how these shell files work and get the work done that you need to do for building Android then there's also these make files. So these make files, um, we use GCC as the um, C and C++ compiler, and it is going to read these make files and do things with these variables. So the variables here are these capital, uh, capital letter um, words here and it's going to make a variable of product device and it's going to call it lexicon and it's going to use that later to say oh that what device is this well it's what product device is it it's lexicon because we declared that and it's also going to call which means to go and get another file and read that one as well call this inherit product of device HTC lexicon device lexicon dot make so it's going to go get that file and read it and do what it says so this is how Android gets built is by reading through these files with these tools like GCC and reading through these files like shell files with bin bash and it runs the commands that are in them and does the things that it says to do and it eventually ends up putting all the right pieces in all the right places and compiling the right sources to make the different files that you need for Android. So hopefully this wasn't too confusing. We really wanted to focus on looking at path and how we run shell scripts. Uh, you will probably have to manually run shell scripts like um, set up make files and extract files when you need to get things off of your phone. And you will probably automatically run files like vendor setup while running other files such as the build environment setup.shell is going to go through and look through all of the folders in your build environment and run all of the vendor setup.shell files which in this case just adds this lunch combo right uh, that gives you the ability to build CyanogenMod, Lexicon, Dash, and your user debug in this case. So 
Hopefully that makes a little more sense to you now as we just look at Linux 101 and how we run these shell files and how we run these make files and some of the tools that we utilize to do that. And the really important takeaway from all of this is path. And path is where all of your files, or excuse me, all of your programs are going to be looked for. Uh, when we run a program like ls, when we run a program like which, it looks in this path environment variable and tries to find where it is. And that's why when you set up to download uh, the repository, you have to download the repo tool and you put it in your bin and then you add that bin to your path. That's one of the beginning uh, things that you have to do is add that to your path so that way it gets run when you type that command. So hopefully that was informative and helpful and uh, hopefully we'll take a look at a few more uh, Linux 101 things in a bit.